Hey folks, welcome back to Prime 5, your five biggest Nintendo news stories in the last 24 hours. Today we got some news on, well, a rumor actually dealing with a bunch of different stuff from Nintendo, including possible new content coming to Breath of the Wild to lead into The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Beyond all of that, we have some news on a collector's edition for Fire Emblem. We got stuff on Octopath Traveler 2 as well, and so much more. Maybe even a little bit of a analysis for you today. Oh boy, let's get right into the news. Our first story deals with Octopath Traveler 2, which was announced during the Nintendo Direct this week, and that is because it is getting a big showcase at Tokyo Game Show this upcoming Saturday. It's going to be about a one-hour-long play session, and it's happening during the Square Enix Presents that they are putting on on Saturday at 1 a.m. Central Time. you got to remember, this is actually being live broadcasted in Japan, so it's going to be based on what's convenient for them, not for us. That's really neat. Octopath Traveler 2, to me, looked really good, and and I can't wait to find out more information. So Tales of Symphonia Remastered was announced during the Direct. It's coming to all platforms next year. But what's really interesting is that it only runs at 30 FPS. And you might go, well, that 30 FPS clearly just applies to the Switch version. Actually, it applies to the PlayStation and Xbox version as well. Which is strange, considering that Tales of Symphonia, back on the Nintendo GameCube, ran at 60 FPS and... There's honestly nothing going on visually with this game that would suggest it can't run at 60 FPS on all platforms. This is a really strange decision, and one that I hope that Tales of Symphonia Remastered's dev team addresses at some point, especially on PlayStation and Xbox. There's not really a reason over there to not go to 60, and on Switch, I'd like to know what the reason is, since the game doesn't look that difficult to run. So our headline story is right here for the third story of the day, and it comes from Reddit. So look, get your tinfoil hats on, back up the truckloads of salt. We are about to go into rumor territory, and there's a lot to go through, so let's just go through it super quick. So this does come from a Reddit user called Blue Zero Peacorn. Uh, he's never actually leaked anything before, but he's not just some random new account. He's been on Reddit for many years based on his Reddit history. He claims to not be an insider. However, they also say, hey, you know what? This morning, I got to talk with someone, and hey, you know what? I don't get the benefit of talking to someone like this very often, so I want to share what they do and they did mention that they have no reason to share this information if it's false because they're not a youtuber or podcaster sort of taking a pot shot at people like me claiming that we get benefits because we make money of course clout could be a much bigger benefit than money but whatever this person is saying what they say they don't have to like me so let's get to the rumors breath of the wild is supposedly going to get free dlc update in february that adds one additional quest that will tie the game into Tears of the Kingdom even better than it already does. Final Fantasy VII Remake is supposedly going to come to Switch via the cloud next year. And apparently, if the Resident Evil cloud games sell well, there will be even more games like this coming to Switch in the future. The Wind Waker port is going to be announced at the beginning of November, and it will release on December 13th. While this is a Tuesday, they claim that they are going to choose this date because it is the 20th anniversary of the Wind Waker, which it is. Claims Twilight Princess was never actually ported. However, Nintendo wanted to find where the leaks were coming from, so they teased it to specific parts of the company to figure out where the leaks are coming out. Game Boy and Game Boy Color is going to come to NSO at some point. Game Boy Advance games are going to be sold individually, sort of like Virtual Console, I guess? at a whopping $19.99 per game. Even for Nintendo, that seems a little steep. Moving on, Nintendo's next generation system will be launching in 2025. That is their internal target year. Because the Wii U bombed and the Switch blew up, they want Switch to have a very long life. Of course, this doesn't necessarily rule out a mid-gen upgrade, but yeah, now you can, I guess, see where this rumor is heading there. Mario Kart 9 will be exclusive to the new system in 2025 launch game probably super mario kingdom is supposedly the next mario game and will be fully open world it's going to release in 2023 or early 2024 there is an internal push to release it around the movie in april or the opening of nintendo world in la but nintendo will release it as always when it's ready nintendo is investing in a movie slash streaming platform that's exclusive to their systems It'll have the Mario movie and obviously all future movie and TV shows on it. Claims that Metroid Prime 4 is being worked on, but it won't be called Metroid Prime 4. 
nor will it be called Metroid Prime. They are rebooting the IP with a fresh brand. They also claim that Metroid Prime HD isn't coming out and was never planned. Of course, Emily Rogers confirmed today that while she hasn't heard anything about The Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, her sources for Metroid Prime HD have a 100% track record and are extremely reliable. So take this for what you will. They also note that Star Fox Zero is supposedly coming out next year for the 30th anniversary of the IP. We'll have to take all of this with a truckload of salt. It requires, and I guess we'll just see what happens. Again, I, you know, it's just rumors. I don't know what to tell you. Next up, we're going to be analyzing Tears of the Kingdom, or at least taking other people's analysis and giving you the rundown. We'll link to their videos down below if you want more of it. But here's what we kind of sort of are figuring out. There are seven spiral-looking teardrops that are present, and they look similar to the Skyward Sword Amber Relic versions of Tears. Seven has always been a significant number in Zelda. Seven Sages, seven Medallions in Ocarina of Time, seven Maidens trapped in the Crystals and A Link to the Past, etc. It's just no Notable as this could indicate that we have to collect seven of these tier objects, which traditionally has meant seven dungeons. While there is some sort of script in the trailer, various symbols, it's not from a known Zelda language, so we can't decipher it yet. You know the Zelda theorists are probably already on this, and if the, anything can be figured out, They'll have it figured out before the holidays. Link's shield has a new symbol that looks similar to the Sheikah symbols seen through all of Zelda. There's also seven triangles, if that happens to mean something. A new item is on Link's belt, where the Sheikah slate once was. It has a set of vials with some sort of green stuff. Could this be similar to the Tears of Light stuff in Twilight Princess, or is this just the source of Link's magic? No idea. The dragons in the logo are basically identical to the dragon statues seen in Breath of the Wild, which were built by an ancient tribe we know little about called the Zonai. So maybe the Zonai play a big role in this. In the world shot, when he's falling down, there are zero Sheikah Towers and shrines at all. We don't see them anywhere. In one shot, there does appear to be a dragon flying in the background as well. Now, there's going to be more deeper analysis that happens and theories. I didn't want to dive too bit into that. I just want to give you guys a quick rundown of the current analysis as it stands today. Last up, we have Fire Emblem Engage because it's getting a divine edition, which is going to include a number of neat things. So they're going to have a poster, a soft cover art book, a steel book case, and art cards. Now, you can't pre-order this yet. And notably, there's a digital version that they claim you'll be able to pre-order but they don't list what's in it. Does that include DLC? Like, these are all physical items. I don't know. Look, something's happening with Fire Emblem Engage. This was announced actually for Nintendo UK. I don't know what's happening in the rest of the world, so don't expect this to be the exact version we get in the US, but a special edition's probably going to happen here as well. And if I had to guess, the way Nintendo's been handling it lately, we'll have to get it on the My Nintendo Store. Digital-wise, no idea what it means. Your guess is as good as mine. Anyways, folks, that's it. I am Nintendo RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. This was the Prime 5, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's episode. Oh, and by the way, we have a podcast tonight, so be sure to head over to the Nintendo Prime podcast channel. We have Jake Randall coming on. We'll be talking all about this week's Direct.